Now let's get into it. Now the talking point from last night, uh, it was made official. Augustine Egovon will lead the team into uh, th that playoffs, heading into uh, that playoffs uh, against Ghana for uh, a World Cup place. Now um, they officially confirmed him still as interim. Yeah. Yeah, because a lot of people were convinced with that. Why not give him the role permanently? But I mean, it was stated clearly that Egovon retained his role as interim manager. But uh, the big change in that backroom team was. Uh, the Dr. Terry Iguaje we saw at the AFCON is no more there. Paul Hallelujah! <laughs> so I'll get a take on that. You know, these exclusions one after I'm the other. I'm a bad boy. Uh, Paul Aibogun is no more there. Yep. He's no more there. So just like Yobo is retained. But the big change there was uh, the inclusion of uh, Emmanuel Amuniki as Egoavon is in now. We know interim manager. Um, but the thing is, if he makes it to the World Cup, you know, the NFL, the statement they released was like they made it room for a foreign manager to come in to take the Super Eagles to the World Cup because they still retain him as an interim manager. No, they didn't now, say they make a room for foreign manager to take to the World Cup. Th you know, that's where I'm interpreting it. I'm, I, you might have a way to interpret I'm not saying they said, but that's the way I saw it. You know, you know they may, may left the role open in case we qualify for the World Cup or if he doesn't make it to the World Cup, another manager might come in to start afresh with the team. Now, but now, what do you make of this whole uh, restructuring, Iman and Amalike coming in, the likes of Aibogun being, you know, Taken out from that place, and Dr. Terry Agoje, who's no more there, but Joseph Yobo still be retained, and uh, Aloy Agu, the goalkeeper trainer as well, still being retained. I mean, uh, we saw what happened with Madoka Okoye. A lot of people came out to say that uh, department has been one department that's been lacking in the Spigus backroom team. So, what do you make of this general reconstruction from the NFF from the statement they released yesterday? Okay, so let me start with those people. You know, when anytime we are having a conversation and the word, this phrase comes in, a lot of people. I always ask, who are these people? What do they know? Because if you don't know anything about my job, you don't have the, the, the local standard to question how I do the job or my, my, my performance on the job. I can't question Kalajaye on how he produces video because I don't know anything about video production, editing, and the rest. I can only suggest and say, ah, I want our video to be like this. So then he will tell me the impediment that we're facing. That, 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 that aside uh the people that are saying that the goalkeeping area was a problem did we lose to tunisia because of a goalkeeping problem even no. before the tunisia game that there's been you know critics from people that That's that department has secondly been... secondly do we have top class goalkeeper you look at cameroon a third place winner let's look let's go to the meda teams at the afcon top place winner their goalkeeper is onana onana have been top class before he go and take pregnancy <laughs> drug okay uh, look at the goalkeepers that not just one, but the goalkeepers that Egypt brought. You're talking of CAF Champions League winners, the, the goalkeepers that have been consistent at the club level for top Egyptian clubs. Yeah. And then you look at the goalkeeper for Senegal. I Mendy. mean, if Senegal did not win this Nations Cup, then they don't deserve to win it. Don't forget that it didn't start. It didn't start with them. Okay, there was one fine boy that looked like. Uh, uh, Maduka Okoye that started their first game, first couple of games, and then uh, uh, Edward Mendy came in and you saw what he did. These are top class goalkeepers. These are goalkeepers that have proven themselves at the very highest level. We have one goalkeeper in Orlando Pirates. We have one in uh, Nobu. Where does Nobu keep? Eimba. Eimba. We have another one in Sparta Rotterdam that will be going to uh, Watford. And then we have one in Nicosia, yeah, in Munia. Cyprus. We do not have a top-class goalkeeper that is keeping for Lille, for Arsenal, for Barcelona, anywhere. So even if you bring in the best goalkeeper trainers in the world, what, what does goalkeeper do? Hey, jump, throw the punch ball. They, you, you come with ability and then they just, what these coaches do is keep you fit, keep you, keep you tuned for the game. You can't tune an ordinary wood to become, to become a string instrument. You tune a string instrument to produce a good sound, right? So there's already the string instrument there. I don't think when people make this argument, they have it right. We do not have the world-class goalkeepers that can do the thing. And then let's not forget, each of these goalkeepers have had their running and Nigerians have also had their argument against them. 2018, it was Uzo. Oh, huh? Nigerians hated him for having two children and calling himself 19. They didn't hate him because he considered goods, which was part of it. But once they wanted to bring him down, they said that he have children and he's calling himself 19. He shouldn't be in the Super Eagles. As a matter of fact, that's what people, people were saying. He shouldn't be in the Super Eagles. He have no business being in the Super Eagles. The coaches listened. And then they gave, what's his name? Uh, Akbaye a chance in 2019. Yeah, Akbaye was so good until we got to the semifinals. Now, listen, Akbaye did not do anything wrong. Remember that Nigerians just wake up and pick somebody to blame. They still blame it today because of that marriage freaky. Akbaye <laughs> did not do anything wrong. 
nothing that free kick will beat any goalkeeper and i we've seen compilation of videos of Maria scoring that kind of free kick against top class goalkeepers in the english premier league and even in european competition but guess what nigerians decided we must single-handedly pick you and blame you Akwe became the, the scapegoat up until the semi-final it was the goalkeeper of the tournament in terms of the rating the the whole technical rating from calf and the rest he was the goalkeeper of the tournament but once we lost that game and went on to play third place match and everything the, the whole story changed everybody said let's kill akwe let's kill akwe that's how his confidence died we now discovered maduka okoye or um uh omar katuba helped us to discover uh, maduka okoye we got maduka okoye when we discovered maduka okoye was playing in fourth division in germany if i'm not mistaken uh, somewhere we all knew that it was going to take time because goalkeepers don't come good just at their young age they need experience they need time they need to grow we all knew it was going to take time and that time is what we are going through with qualifiers first african cup of nation that is keeping as a first choice this experience takes time edward mendy did not become top class goalkeeper overnight neither did uh, madaski or what they call madaki the goalkeeper of uh, gabaski yeah. gabaski or whatever his name Gabal, is did yeah. the, 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 not become top class goalkeeper overnight these things take time okay it take time a when 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 uh Iyama went to the 2002 world cup and kept that game against england and made that save against the Beckham up or scores and then went on to win the cup champions league and then went on you know all his career it was in the later part Iyama was really top notch when he was a little but before then it was still shaky when it was in israel it was still shaky and there so goalkeepers take time to build their confidence expand their reflexes and become masters of their territory learn how to talk to their teammates and all that this is a team that you're still young and you're still new to you take time to shout on on, on your teammate but nigerians now have not destroyed this one so 2018 francis was all killing you you you, you destroyed his confidence 2019 uh, Daniel Akpey, you destroyed his confidence. Now again, Nigerians, Nigerians are always telling NFF to learn. Nigerian government should learn. You did not learn that you are destroying your own. Now it is Madika Okoye. Then there are some young players that Nigerians are saying, go and bring. Uh, Chideraizi, um, uh, Olise. Do you think those players who want to come and play for this Nigeria that attacked you for things that you didn't do? Tell you that. So, Madika Okoye's first scene is that he's a fine boy. Because it's fine. That's an offense. That's a criminal offense. Why should a Nigerian be fine? Nigeria is not supposed to be fine. Tomorrow, people will be attacked for being rich, for being successful. I, I don't think it works that way. But let's come to your question. I think what the NFF have done is to use a fail-safe to protect themselves against anything. Because if you want to give a government contract, you either give him a two years or a four years contract for stability yeah. purpose and for continuity so that he can, you know, build on whatever gains that we've gotten. But we really did not succeed at the AFCON. If you consider 2019 a failure, you were expecting that we'll get to the finals and build upon whatever happened in 2019. But then we, we, that didn't happen. So what the NFF have done is going through all of this whirlwind of letting Ganatra go in and paying for it dearly, even though one one way or the other they gave nigerians what they wanted nigerians wanted a team that plays entertainment football irrespective of what they win and that's what they gave Iguavon gave us so on one front nigerians won but football lost okay now the nfl is saying to themselves I, I, this is not a conversation i have with them but it's no brainer it's easy to know They're saying to themselves why give him a four years contract or a two years contract when we have ghana ghana is not comoros ghana is not cape verde it's not central african republic ghana is a team that's good enough to beat nigeria and qualify for the world cup ghana also have been damaged coming from the nation's cup they are wounded lion they want to redeem their image why give him a contract now yeah it's good for stability in his mind but then if you are a man who needs the job you've got to prove yourself so the nation's cup there is still doubt in your tactics there is still doubt in your ability to pick players there's still you know question mark in how you select your team and all that so so what we're going to do is we're going to give you this job as interim but this is your last exam pass this exam in flying colors and then we will see what we will do with you going to the world cup but there is still a little bit of that now they've seen that the backroom staff didn't work well uh polite bogo is just there making up the number a graduate is just there for me fine boy greeting people healing everybody not no fault of ease but i don't think that there was clear definition of what he needed to do because all the coaches were just clustering together there was nobody going to spy the opponent there was nobody you know giving technical reports about the opposition if they were doing it i didn't see it and i didn't hear of it so i'm i'm, I'm standing i stand corrected i'm standing on the side of as close as i got to the team and i know that this thing didn't happen from my own perspective now having said that they decided to bring him imani amonika amonika is good because he's with the calf technical team so 
any report about any team in Africa is on his desk. It's on his table. So he knows about these clubs, these coaches, their players, and everything. That's an advantage. He coming to work with uh, Iguavon, would the two of them have a good synergy? I don't know, mm -hmm. but they were teammates. They were teammates. And it's easy to say because they were teammates, they should have good synergy. But then we've seen in time past that the class of 94, they are all an interregnum, a marriage that is not meant to happen. They always work against themselves. Would they shield their sword right now and look for good? Now, nah, I also know when I invited Iguavon to my podcast, I also know that most of them say that Iguavon is like a father, he's a unifying factor. So it might just be the guy that everybody wants to rally around and help to succeed. Let's see how that goes. But I think that the NFL, in terms of business, is a business decision. They've taken a very good business decision because if you sign Iguavon to a two years contract or a four years contract, and let's say hypothetically we play against Ghana home and away and we lose, Nigerians will say fire him. When you fire him, you have to pay him off. Okay, for the whole two years. The money that the NFL does not have, they will not go and spend it on paying Iguavon off. And then Iguavon would have also lost the position of a football director. So I think this is fine. Iguavon also needs to decide what it was. Does he want to be a football director for the next four years because this contract is renewable for four years and it's almost up? Okay, but somewhere later this year, that contract is going to be renewed. Does he want to be a football director or he wants to be a coach? And if he wants to be a coach, this game against Ghana does not come any smaller. This is one big game that I can prove myself. If he beat Ghana home and away, I, I, what is going for Iguavon is the fact that Nigerians will stand up for him. You beat yeah. Egypt, well, fine. You beat Sudan, you beat Guinea, Guinea Bissau, good. But you struggled against Tunisia. If you beat one of our eternal arc rivals, it's like a local derby. If you beat them, it's like being an Arsenal coach and beating Sports, or being a Man United coach and beating Man City, or being a Barcelona or Real Madrid coach and beating either, either, either ways. So if you can beat Ghana home and away convincingly, the play is good, the selection is on point, the substitution is on point, Nigerians will carry placard. I know the way we, we think. Nigeria will carry placard and say, give him the contract. So, I don't think that NFL have done anything wrong on this front. It's fantastic as far as I'm concerned. All right. Just uh, you know, give you full details of the full uh, reshuffling they did at the back room. Is, uh, Augustine Agavon retains his role. Uh, you know, the official role they gave him, technical advisor. Ah, there's interim, no technical advisor. You know, the, interim you know, manager. They, forget it. They wrote it technical director slash technical advisor, interim. Uh. So that's the you know that's what is written on the NFL for official release. Iman El Amunike, chief coach, first assistant, Salisu Yusuf is still there as a second assistant and the chief coach, and he will also be in charge of the Chan Eagles. Joseph Yobo is still retains his position, but this time around he's gonna be the third assistant. Then uh Aloysius Agu retains his position as a goalkeeper trainer. Like I said earlier, there's no more Paul Aibogu and there's no more Dr. Terry Agraji. You are listening to a TV radio.